cards on the table. Um, my Galaxy S23 Ultra actually came in a little bit later than everybody else's, uh, so I've been taking my time with it, and now I can share with you some thoughts that I have on this phone after one week of using it. It may come as a little surprise that because this phone is markedly similar to last year's Ultra, the experience so far has been pretty much what I have expected. But there are plenty of points to be made about Samsung's latest and greatest. So, it's Joshua Fagar. What's going on, everybody? Here is my Samsung Galaxy S23, week one. Of course, being an Ultra device, what we're dealing with here is a very big phone. With all of the power underneath this massive screen, you're just going to have to consider that this is going to be one of the more unwieldy phones because it's trying to provide as much as possible. The flatter sides on this phone certainly help, but you know what actually really helps is the one-handed mode. And I'm going to be showing that off a little bit during this video. The fact that I can actually just swipe down slowly on this bottom portion and then everything is much easier to reach. I'm actually really happy that this mode is here. It has been for a while, but I have been using Using it more than ever. Performance of course has been top notch from games to the camera usage to just having multiple apps running at once. It's no surprise given the specifically tuned Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. The phone software is delightfully snappy, helped along by the high refresh rate at high resolutions. And as it turns out, because of the 5000 milliamp hour battery and optimizations in the processor, uh, you can actually turn on everything from the motion smoothness to the quad HD resolution, and you will be able to still get some pretty good battery life. More on that a little bit later. Even the phone itself looks very similar to last year's, and I personally think that's kind of a good thing because we haven't had this design too often just yet to where it's already starting to get stale. But when we're talking about the hardware on here, we have to talk about the S Pen. I said that I find the S Pen to be a fun tool. It certainly sets the Galaxy S23 Ultra or any of the current Ultra phones apart from the rest of the pack and any other Android smartphone because it's a really good stylus that just happens to be hidden inside of the phone. Pretty much no other smartphone has this kind of feature built into it. A good number of you actually commented in my last video that you actually use the S Pen for jotting down quick notes, whether it's personal notes or anything for work. I mean, as you can see over here, I have an e note and I do love the feeling of not just e notes like this, but also uh, pen and paper and whatnot. And I just can't find myself uh, converting that experience over to a smartphone. Not only is the surface kind of glossy for long form writing, I also just can't see myself putting my phone down like this, taking out the S Pen and writing out long form journals like five minute journals or gratitude journals. It just doesn't really translate over. So long form writing is just not something that I or many people tend to do. But if you do long form writing on your S Pen enabled smartphones, well, let me know in the comments. But that being said, the S Pen is still very useful for plenty of other applications. Uh, precision inputs for things like photo or video editing um, are a great example. And of course, the S Pen doubles as a remote shutter for the camera. So you can go a little bit hands-free-ish when it comes to your shooting. Again, the S Pen is just a distinct feature that does set this phone apart. And if you do find yourself using it a lot, that might be enough uh, to justify the cost of this high premium smartphone. All right, well, the tea is done. Uh, this one is an herbal tea called Cup of Calm from Traditional Medicinals. And like in every video, uh, I invite you to have some tea with me. And during today's tea break, I actually want to talk a little bit about Calm. Look, it's been a really busy week, and not only because of releases like the Galaxy S23 Ultra, but also because of a lot of travel that has been happening recently, and I have needed a lot of time to just rest up and to try to center myself uh, amongst all of the hectic and frantic energy that has been happening recently. So let's have an actual tea break. Allow me in this quick moment to just give you a little bit of a break, and you can follow along with me. Let's just go ahead and get a little bit of breathing done, some deep breaths, as we remind ourselves that despite all of the crazy busyness that is happening right now, we do have those moments that we can actually take for ourselves to chill out for a little bit. So here we go, deep breath in and deep breath out. With every inhalation, try to acknowledge any of the anxiety that you might be feeling, or maybe you just want to take a break from your daily YouTube viewing. And then as you breathe out, let me just remind you to remind yourself that you got this. Whatever is happening right now, whatever you are dealing with, whatever you have to do, you can handle it. In the present moment, when we have the ability to just enjoy what is happening or what we are doing, that is a beautiful thing. So let's remember to do that and remember to enjoy either the things that are happening or the people that are around us. For example, enjoying a delicious matcha soft serve and the wonderful company that was with me at that time. And to end this tea break, I'm just going to go ahead and invite all of you to also talk with me. This is a discussion, a conversation between us in these moments in our tech videos. So let me just ask all of you, What's going on, everybody? Let me know how you're doing in the comments, and I hope you come for the tech, but stay for the tea.
So let's get into a little bit of software, a little bit of power. Um, it's great that with everything that this phone can do, including everything with the S Pen, this is still a very snappy user experience. I have had no issues whatsoever with the speed or the smoothness of the phone. And of course, we have ourselves a high refresh rate screen that just makes everything feel, at least, uh, even that much snappier. And that's all thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy. This is a really interesting development for the Galaxy S23 Ultra and for smartphones in general. See, what we're seeing here is kind of like a paradigm shift as far as uh, gauging how performance is measured among different smartphones, certainly Android smartphones. Now, it's not going to be a huge leap. You have uh, a basically an overclocked, a slightly overclocked version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, uh, but that does mean that even if it's just by an inch, this phone could potentially be the most powerful Android smartphone on the market currently. Honestly, it's just so interesting to me that 4 Galaxy could actually be added to a smartphone processor's name and actually mean it. But for anybody out there that's not looking so hard at those specs, you just couldn't be more at ease knowing that the S23 Ultra can just handle anything you throw at it. Now some thoughts on battery life. What we have here is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, still the same capacity as before, but because of this new processor and the optimizations that are within, battery life on here has been pretty great. And by great, I mean basically as expected with a little bit of extra sprinkled on top. On that day that I was hanging out with Mr. Mobile, uh, just hanging out in San Diego and using the phone for like a lot of camera usage, uh, definitely using the phone for all of our navigation and pretty much anything that we needed that day, I was able to get to the end of the day driving back home to LA uh, without really any range anxiety. So even if you're just a little bit measured in terms of your usage, you're not a super power user, you're going to get plenty of battery life out of this thing and that's awesome. If you're going to pay this much for a phone, you want it to be able to last as long as needed. Um, and for most people out there, it's certainly going to do that. One thing I do want to mention, however, is that in the settings, you have plenty of options to actually uh, extend that battery life. I mentioned earlier that you can turn down the resolution, turn down the high refresh rate. But if we go here into the battery settings and head over to the battery, I go over to more battery settings. I found this interesting. The performance profile can actually be sent over to light. Right now it's on standard. It's the recommended balance between processing speed, battery life, and cooling. But if you head over to light, it would prioritize battery life a little bit more. Perhaps uh, bring down that clock speed a tiny bit or just change a couple of things up. And I may actually use the light profile on days when I just want to ensure, have ha, no shadow of a doubt that I could get through an entire day and then some with this phone. Let's talk a little bit more about the software. And what we have here is Samsung's UI, which basically has looked the way that it has looked for the last couple of years. Everything here is as expected. You have an overwhelming amount of options and features on here. Everything from like a side dock over here, again, the S Pen and plenty of other software features that you can take advantage of to just customize your everyday experience. Now, while I'm glad that Samsung UI has really leaned into its own identity and into its own design language, there are still certain things about it that I just find kind of irksome. And yes, some of them do come back to the whole everyday handling experience. From the jump, I already feel a little bit overwhelmed by just the amount of customization. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying that there's so much that you are able to do from the lock screen to the actual wallpapers themselves to the customization of the way everything looks, and it could be a little bit overwhelming for some. I think for a number of people who are using this phone, it's going to end up looking a little bit more like this, like it came out of the box because, well, you may not have the time or the energy to go into literally everything and change things up. And on the topic of customization, one thing that kind of gets me is if I'm going to be changing up all of the different icons on my main home screens, uh, let's say I want to put this application somewhere, it's got to be a two-handed experience because I got to drag all the way to the top of the phone just to be able to come back to the home screens. That still strikes me as a kind of odd design choice. Um, I understand that if you're really diving into the phone and trying to customize it, you'll probably use two hands. But sometimes, man, like having to create situations where you have to reach to the top of this large phone, uh, it just seems a little bit odd to me and not always a good quality of life uh, aspect. Once again, thank goodness for one-handed mode. The other thing that just kind of irks me is just the amount of choice that we still have to navigate between Samsung versions of applications and Google versions. For example, Samsung Pay is still a thing here and I actually have it turned off because I installed Google Pay. If we take a look at the keyboard, I am trying to use the Samsung keyboard, uh, but I find that it's uh, auto suggestions are just not in line with what I really want. And I'm probably gonna end up putting Google uh, keyboard on here sooner rather than later. Samsung Messages is still on here, even though the default is supposed to be version of Google Messages made for Samsung. There is, of course, the discussion of Bixby versus Google Assistant. And as someone who has already set up Google Assistant for a number of different things, smart home and otherwise, um, I find myself using Google Assistant way more. I barely touch Bixby. 
And then I have a small anecdote about the software stuff. Uh, I actually, for a little bit of time, was not able to get Screen Off Memo to work. If you don't already know, Screen Off Memo is when you can take the S Pen out while the phone is in standby, and it will just immediately open up a notepad for you to jot down some quick notes or anything. Now, it wasn't working for me, and I was scratching my head as to why this was the case. And then finally, I had sort of a thought. Um, even though Samsung Notes, the application that runs Screen Off Memo and everything else, um, even though it is available in the Google Play Store, uh, I decided to jump into the Galaxy Store, uh, sign into my Samsung account, as you should, and the update that was on there was different from the one that was in the Google Play Store. I find that to just be a tiny bit sketchy, no pun intended. Uh, basically that you have to have the Galaxy Store on here, you have to have your account signed in, you have to make sure that you are updating everything via the Galaxy Store, or you might not even be getting the version that you need for the smartphone you just paid a bunch of money for. Um, it's not a huge deal, but I just thought it was funny that that had to be the dichotomy, that there has to be a dichotomy at all between Galaxy Store and Play Store versions of the same app for an Android phone. But anyway, let's finish this off by talking a little bit about the cameras. Now, one thing I should mention, um, I did get some camera shots and obviously you've been seeing a lot of them in this video. Let me know what you think of the camera quality in the comments down below, but I do still plan on doing a real world camera test with the Galaxy S23 Ultra pretty soon and that'll be like vlog style like you remember, so stay tuned for that. In a nutshell though, everything here is looking good and it's looking as expected. But this time, what we have is a main sensor that is now 200 megapixels. Now 200 megapixels is a great buzzword, but there are other enhancements in here as well, including improved OIS. So videos actually look even more stable when you are using the main sensor. Samsung are using what is called Tetra squared binning in order to get 16 pixels into one, which ultimately makes that 200 megapixel camera output somewhere around 12 megapixel final shots. But you do have the option of getting full 200 megapixel photos, uh, and I do plan on actually trying that out uh, and maybe even using one of those shots, one of those large photos, uh, in order to get an actual print done. I actually want to try it out this time around. Other than that, you get the ultra wide, which immediately adds some drama to any scene. Uh, that way you can just fit a lot more in there. But you can also tell, especially in video, that the quality does have an obvious decline in comparison to the main sensor. That is pretty much expected. And then you have the zooms. I'll admit, I don't really zoom into my photos and videos a whole lot, but when they are available and when they are pretty good, like they are here in the Galaxy S23 Ultra at three times and 10 times optical, I do tend to try to use them more and more often. Finally, the front-facing camera, as you've seen already, provides uh, some good photos, um, some really good selfies. It is a 12 megapixel sensor up front at this point, uh, and it is doing a pretty great job. I've gotten plenty of selfies on here, especially with the friends, and I'm pretty happy with the results. But of course, uh, the thing that I'm definitely going to appreciate is 4K video recording. And of course, with a good front-facing camera and the S Pen as a remote shutter button, so you don't actually have to reach over to the phone every single time, this could be a great combination for anyone looking to do social media content creation. Now, again, I'm going to dive into more of the features and some of the other modes that are available in the camera app, including maybe Expert Raw. Uh, but by and large, uh, this camera system will be great for anybody that's just looking for a good camera to have in their pockets on the daily. For most people, and in pretty much most lighting situations, you can rest assured that the pictures and even the videos out of this phone are going to be pretty top notch. And so there you have it. I just wanted to jot down some notes and give you some thoughts on main aspects of the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's really easy for everyone to look at this phone and think, you know what, it's a little bit too similar to last year's phone, so maybe I can write it off a little bit. But it is still an upgrade from the S22 Ultra, both in performance and in the camera performance. Uh, so if you really are wanting to be on the bleeding edge of uh, smartphones, especially in the Samsung lineup, this is definitely the one to go for. And maybe it's going to be good for you to trade in whatever phone or Samsung phone or otherwise you have in order to make this a little bit easier to get. I do have some trade-in deals that are available in the description and in the pinned comment below, so you can check it out there if you are itching to get the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. But that is going to go ahead and do it for my week one look at the phone. I've had this thing literally for one week and I just wanted to bring you guys some thoughts while I continue testing this and bringing you more content here on my channel. All right, with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and for hanging with me during the tea break as well. Remember, get into the comments and let me know how you're doing as I ask what's going on everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea everybody.